Since the beginning of time, mankind has sought to attain one very special dream. Although endless pills, potions and prayers have been used in an attempt to realize this dream, it has never come true. Yet the quest goes on, whatever the cost. In today's story, someone else sets out to make a reality of that dream. Don't you think we should stop? No. I mean before... before we succeed. But we have succeeded. Look at the eyes. They're looking back at you. They're not. Move your hand closer. Go on. John, we should stop. Closer. <gasps> oh, he bit me. He damn well bit me. You see? I'm bleeding. He bit you that hard? That's wonderful. June, put that cat outside. And what makes you think I let him in? Because you always let him in. Now put him out. He's cold out. And he's smelly in. This caravan's not big enough for the three of us. Oh, come on then, Puss. Come on. That's better. Now come and have some tea. And take this coat off. It's all right. You don't have to do it for me. I'm not stupid. Didn't say you were stupid. I'm steady. Reliable. Who have you been talking to? No one. No one? I see. Cat's got your tongue, is it? Can't have. Cat's outside. <laughs> oh, we are Miss Clever today, aren't we? So what's Miss Clever... I've handed in my notice at the pet shop. You've done what? Are you telling the truth? Yes. What's got into you? Do you know the trouble we went to to get you that job? A job with animals, a job you could do? They're in cages. Never mind cages. You'll go back down there now and apologise to Mr Tutton and say you want your job back. But I'm going to have a career. What are you talking about? Dr Bellhampton has offered me a career at Crowley. What? The research place? What is all this about? He came into the shop to buy some rats, but then he came back because I'm the sort of girl he's looking for, he said. I can start on Monday. That's what you think. Haven't you heard what they say goes on there? Things to turn your stomach. He said you'd be worried, so he should come and see you. Set your mind at rest, he said. Did he now? She impressed me at the pet shop, Mrs Woods. So uh, helpful and conscientious. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Not like so many young people today. Obviously well brought up. Well, she was, yes. Tell me, Doctor, what does this work involve? Nothing strenuous. Looking after some animals, keeping an eye on things, just being there. The work? What is it? Pushing back the frontiers of medicine. Working in the battle against cancer. I don't think anyone can argue against that. Well, no. Mrs Woods, I'd very much like June to work for me. If you're still worried in any way, then come along to see the laboratories, meet my colleagues. I'd be delighted to involve you as much as you like. Yes. Doctor, you do know June is, well, educationally, um... Different, yes. Mm. But she's quite capable of doing what needs to be done. I do hope you'll feel able to let her come and work with us. So, June, this is your room. I didn't think I'd get a room. Well, it's just somewhere in case you should ever need to stay the night. Do you feel at home here? I think so. I expect a girl like you feels at home most places. You must have lots of friends. No. Really? Not a special friend? Just Mum. And Dad? He works away. Well, I'd like to be friends with you. Do you think we could be friends? I think so. Good. <coughs> Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Uh, listen, if we're going to be friends, there's one thing I'm going to have to ask you. Can you keep a secret, June? I think so. You want to be friends, don't you? Oh, yes. So if I tell you something's a secret, you mustn't tell it to anyone, not even to your mother. You have to promise. Yes. John. Hmm? Oh, is this her? 
It is. Maggie, I'd like you to meet Miss June Woods, our new laboratory assistant. June, this is Maggie, my deputy. Hello. How are you? How am I? Oh, don't ask. John, hmm? I've just spoken to Clive. He's talking about the 22nd. Yes? I thought we'd agreed to postpone the op for at least two months. Well, we've changed our minds, haven't we? So why don't you run along and organise it? John, I really think you ought to... Yes? <sighs> Nothing. Nothing. We mustn't let ourselves be disturbed by the other staff, must we, June? <laughs> no. Not when we're having a meeting. Now, let me show you where you're going to work. And you're very privileged to be allowed in. Everything that happens in there is secret. You remember about secrets? Yes. Good. What? It's our monkeys. But they're all in cages. And that one's got things in his head. And so's this one. They all have. That's because they're ill. Ill? Yes. Suffering from incurable diseases, and we're engaged in medical research to see if we can save their lives. But they look unhappy. But if we can cure them, that would be good, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it, June? Yes. Then we can cure millions of people all over the world, and that would be good too, wouldn't it? Yes, but... What? They're all full of tubes. <laughs> Not all of them. Look, come here, look. Meet Control. He's not ill. We keep him here so we can compare him to all our other monkeys to see if they're getting better. Control. Is that his name? Well, yes, I suppose it is. He has lovely brown eyes. Do you like Control, then? Yes. Good. Now, June, if you work in here, you'll be able to say to those people who make fun of you, you'll be able to say to them, I've got a career in medical research. No, I wouldn't. Why not? Because it's a secret. <laughs> Good girl. Will you do it then? All right. Good. Now, have you any questions for me? Yes. Is Maggie your wife? Oh, good heavens, that's a funny question. <laughs> Shall I tell you something, June? Yes. Maggie's been a bit difficult to work with recently. I think I may have to dismiss her. I have to think of the good of the laboratory. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, dear. Hello, Control. How are you? I wish you wouldn't look so sad. I've brought you some fruit. Dr. Bellhampton said I could. I'd like to touch you, but I'm not allowed to because you'll bite me. You won't bite me with you. Not if I put my finger through the cage. No, I knew you wouldn't. Shall I rub your head? Like Mum does when she washes my hair. Hello? What are you doing, June? I've closed everything up like I'm supposed to. Yes. Yes, you have, haven't you? What an excellent assistant you are. And you've made friends, I see. Yes. I don't like looking at all the other monkeys, even though I know they're ill and you're trying to cure them. Cure them? Yes. John's a right little St. Francis of Assisi, isn't he? And, of course, very handsome. I suppose you're attracted to him, are you, Jim? <laughs> I'll tell him. You'll like that. And uh, does he talk about me? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes, too, shall I? Has he mentioned firing me? You see, I need to know. I've been offered this well-paid job, and if I'm going to be dismissed... I might as well take it. Only I need to know now. You understand? Yes. It's my whole future at stake, you see. Please. Is there anything you can tell me? No. Only if you were to tell me, 
I could help you. You know what will happen to Control here, after all the experiments are over. There'll be no use for him. He'll be put down. Killed. No. You wouldn't want that, would you? It's not fair. No, it's not. And I could arrange for him to be saved if only could you... Could you now? Doctor, you said to try my best. You won't kill Control, will you? No, of course not. I'm afraid we've just been testing you to see if you could keep a secret. Only Maggie was a little over-enthusiastic. But you're not going to kill Control. And good heavens, no. Promise me. Of course I promise. I promise no one will ever hurt Control. Is that enough? All right. Anyway, June, you've done very well. You've shown you can keep a secret. And I promise any secret from now on will be deadly serious. You might see some real surprises next week. What? What do you mean, next week? I mean a seven-day period of time from the present. You know what I'm saying. We agreed not to rush ahead. Oh, pardon me. Naturally, I defer to your superior intelligence. Obviously, all I've done is to be the first person in the world to perfect a new scientific technique. Whereas you've been the lifeblood of this laboratory, thanks to your nervous breakdowns. Perhaps I should really do it. Hmm? Perhaps I should fire you. Shall I do that? Shall I? It really would be no trouble. No, John. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I said no. So you're staying, then? June? She's staying. <laughs> now, isn't that nice? <coughs> John? Are you all right? <coughs> Hello, Control. Do you know something? We've been best friends for exactly two weeks. Well, two weeks and... 17 minutes. You are still my best friend, aren't you? Hello, June. How's your career coming along? Busy, are you? I'm speaking to Control. Mm, I'm sure it's a great meeting of minds. Oh, I do like your earrings. Where did you get them from? I... well... Oh, yes. I remember. Dr. Bellhampton gave them to you, didn't he? And you take them off before you go home so your mum doesn't see them, don't you? <laughs> Nasty to you, aren't I? A bit. Do you know why? I'm jealous, you see. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? Me being jealous of you. He's only my friend. Oh, don't worry. I'm used to it. He just likes collecting women like other men collect matchboxes. I don't know why I don't leave him. That's why he likes me, I suppose. Because I can't. Listen to me. Talking to you like you talk to that bloody monkey. He's not a bloody monkey. He's control. That's what they should call John. Evil-minded bastard. I think he gets angry because he's ill. He takes all those pills. When? When he thinks no one's looking. You've seen him? I think that's why he's nasty to you sometimes. He's nasty because he likes being nasty. I don't think so. He cures all the monkeys here. Oh, yes. Like a bacon smoker cures pigs. Shall I show you what's inside this little room here? <laughs> yes. I think I will. Well, Dr. Bellhampton said I mustn't go in there until I was shown. Oh, well, then that's all right. You're about to be shown. Come on. Are you frightened to look? No. All right, then. There. How do you like it? It's a monkey. Oh, correction. It's a monkey's head. But it's moving. It's alive, that's why. But its body... It hasn't got one. These tubes pump the blood in and out, and the machinery acts as heart and lungs. Oh, it's horrid. Isn't it? 
See how Dr. Bellhampton amuses himself on rainy Sunday afternoons. Is it really alive? Push that button. That button there, push it. See? It can speak. It has a voice box. And look at it, watching you with its little beady eyes. Put your hand near. Go on. Oh! See? It tries to bite you, you see? Oh, nothing new, of course. According to the good doctor, a French scientist in the 1880s tried to attach the heads of guillotined prisoners onto the bodies of dogs. Unsuccessfully, I presume. It was indeed. Why was this door left unlocked? I, I was just showing her. Excellent. I was going to show her today anyway. Why don't you run along, Maggie? I just thought it was about time she knew yes, what was... Yes, of course you did. Nothing wrong with that. John, I... We'll speak later. So, June, what do you think of our latest breakthrough? Why did you do it? Because it's a way of keeping the monkey alive. It was dying, you see. Lots of tumours in the body, but its head was untouched. So this way, using an artificial heart and lungs and a kidney machine to cleanse the blood, we should be able to keep it alive almost indefinitely. You look worried, June. Yes, because it's... Saving a life. Soon we'll be able to do the same for humans. Like if your mother was to get cancer. You wouldn't want her to die and leave you all alone, would you? No. Exactly. And this way we could keep her alive. So you see why we did it? Is there another head? No. Why? There's two empty cages. Aren't you observant? <laughs> Oh, well, you've got a naturally scientific mind, you see. And you're right. To perform the operation, we need some of the blood vessels from a second monkey whose tissue matches. So you killed two? The second one was very ill. He'd have died within 24 hours. And at least this way we're keeping one monkey alive. Aren't we, June? Yes. Good. But remember, this is a secret. Yes. You see, any tittle-tattle in the village could wreck the chances of success. <laughs> Do you believe in God? Oh, yes. God hears every promise you make. And down below is hell. Full of all the bad people who broke promises. All the bad people in endless torment. All that screaming. I'll keep my promise. You don't have to frighten me. I wasn't trying to. It's just I reflect on torment quite a lot at the moment. It's necessary sometimes, you know, for us to advance. And we must advance. Always advance. Now, June, would you be prepared to work nights here? We need someone to keep an eye on the place. Obviously, I'll talk to your mother and we'll increase your pay and just think. You'll be able to have lots of long talks with control. You should be asleep, control. You should be tucked up under nice white sheets. I sleep during the day now. I wake up and it's dark again. But I don't mind. I don't mind being here all alone. Especially now there's not so many ill monkeys since they moved all these machines into this room. Dr. Bellhampton says they got better, so they've gone back to the jungle. I expect you'll go there soon. Should I not talk anymore? Should I let you sleep? Should I rub your head for you and sing you a lullaby? I'll do that, shall I? Rock-a-bye monkey on the treetop When the wind blows the cradle will rock When the boughs bend the cradle will fall Down comes the monkey 
So I hear you singing? You were singing? Yes. <laughs> singing to your monkey. <laughs> Will you sing to me? Please, I'd rather not. So? You sing for a monkey, but not for me. John? Do you know why people like monkeys? Because they're helplessly inferior prototypes of themselves. All right, John. Probably some teacher of extreme low intelligence telling them how wonderful nature is. I hate all this fashionable, sentimental slobbering over nature. Man's destroying nature. Good. Let's get the bastard before he gets us. Decay. That's what nature is. And, yes, I have been drinking. He's had some bad news, June. You go home now. I'll call you a taxi. Come back on Monday. Clamp. Tweezers. Oh, and for God's sake, get rid of that swab. Oh, sorry. There. Has it worked? Has it? I don't know. I've done my best. God, I know I owed John a favour, but this... It was good of you to do it. Blackmail is what made me do it, and you know it. Yes, I do. And if you ever mention a word of this, your career will be over. You think it isn't already? June. Hello. How are you? Did you have a nice weekend? Uh, yes. June, you know Dr. Bullhampton thinks a lot of you. He... well, he picked you because he felt he could rely on you. Yes. And now, well, what he wants you to do is going to come as a bit of a shock. And, well, oh, to hell with it. You might as well go in. What's happened? You'll see. There. Control. Control. He's not in his cage. June, for God's sake, forget about control. Where is he? I don't know. On, on holiday. June, look. Look. There. Do you see? Dr. Bellhampton. Yes. What do you see? Just his head. Yes. Like the monkeys. June, listen. I hate it. I hate Don't it. Don't go, June. Just listen. June. <gasps> Dr. Bellhampton. Yes. Are you alive? Yes. I'm alive. He had cancer very badly. This was the only way to stop him from dying. Some colleagues of his old friends. They operated on Saturday. Oh, it's horrid. Don't be frightened, June. It's only me. But your body... Frozen till they find a cure. But the important part of me is here. I can think. That's what counts. Bodies only weigh us down. Now, are you all right, June? I think so. Good. Because I'm relying on you. I'm going to stay with him by day. But he needs someone to look after him at night. Will you do it? Where's control? Like Maggie says, on holiday. Yes. We thought he deserved a weekend in the country with lots of space to run around in. He'll be back tomorrow. Now, will you do it, June? It's very simple. All you have to do is look after Dr. Bellhampton. And if there's an emergency, press this alarm. I'll stay with you tonight. Then after that, you're on your own. Do you think you can do it? Doctor? What is it you want? Oh, I see. 
You have to press that before I can speak. Yes, I realize. What's it like outside? There's a big storm. You say it's the worst this winter. Mum says it's because we're mucking about with nature. We're not mucking about with her. We're mastering her. Do you understand that? Yes. Is something the matter? Yes. I want control back. But he is back. Can't you see? Where? In his cage. That's not him. Of course it is. It's not control. His eyes are different. It's control, June. I swear to you. I promise you that's control. That is control. You told me a lie about firing Maggie, didn't you? I had to. We had to be sure of you. Where is control? That's him. There. What's that? The wind. It's blown a branch through the window. You have to use another monkey for the blood vessels, don't you? Put something across the window, quick. Don't you? Not necessarily. You killed Control, didn't you? June. You killed Control. All right. What the hell? I killed him. I had to. He was the monkey whose tissue best matched mine. He was only a monkey, for God's sake. You promised you'd never hurt him. Yes, but I had to survive, didn't I? My brain. You don't realize the importance of what I've created here. What I've achieved. What I'm capable of. It's an advance. It's progress. It's freeing mankind from death and decay. No. No, it's just to save yourself. You killed Control to save yourself. Where are you going? I'm letting the monkeys out. What? You can't. Stop it. I'm letting them out of their cages before you kill anymore. Stop. For the love of God, stop. You killed my friend. June, don't let them near me. Don't let them touch me. I set them free. Stop them. They're playing with the equipment. Stop them! They're altering the flow of blood! I can feel it! June! Oh, the voice switch, please! Help! They're playing with the voice! Stop them! Please! Killing me, in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down comes the monkey cradle. Before the dawn of that stormy night, an army team had moved in and sealed off the laboratory. It seemed none of the animals had escaped until a week later, when a crazed and disfigured monkey was found shivering in a drainage ditch. No one ever saw June and her mother again. As time passed, local people began to doubt that such unnatural experiments had ever taken place. Skeptics would be well advised to inquire at the United States Patent Office for patent number 466. No, I'd better not tell you the number. It is for a machine to carry out just such unnatural experiments. In The Monkey's Revenge, the mother was played by Jenny Howe, June, Catherine Alexander, John, Richard Pascoe, Maggie, Helena Breck, and the surgeon, Ronald Hurtman. The play was written by Guy Jenkin and directed by Jerry Jones. I am Edward de Souza, the man in black. Next week at the same time, I extend to you all an invitation to the vaults. <laughs>